there's a link between passion and achievement. And I think it's safe to say that people who achieve, achieve truly great things are passionate about what they do. And it's also safe to say that passion by its nature is intrinsic. It is fueled by intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation doesn't work on passion. You can't bribe or threaten someone into being passionate about something. In fact, it's likely to have the opposite effect as years of um, research, foundational research in this field is, has shown us again and again and again. There's a relationship between these two. If we take, I need two hands to do these visuals. Um, if we increase extrinsic motivation, we decrease intrinsic motivation. And remember, this is the one that fuels passion. So here's the question of the day. How do we maintain a passion for learning? How do we instill in students a lifelong love of learning? How do we cultivate a love of a particular academic subject or of education itself? Answer, let's go back to preschool. We can learn a lot from preschool. Here are my kids standing outside their school on the first day of school this year. Heath and Emily, they love school. They are learning Spanish mathematics, they're learning how to read and write, they're learning about religion and science, they're studying math, um, art, music, dance, all without extrinsic motivations, all without gold stars or pizza parties as rewards for performance measures, or without grades, without grades. And they're learning very quickly and very enthusiastically. Heath, in particular, is very fond of the library. He has been heard to remark without being prompted to do so. I love the library. The library is fun. The library is filled with exciting books, all of which is music to my ears as a father and an educator. My boy loves reading, my boy loves the library. It's intrinsic, we're off to a good start. So last summer, we're in the library, and the librarian sees us and says, have you heard about our Young Readers program? And I said, no, tell me about this. He said, well, if a child reads 10 books, and fills out this form, he or she can get a fabulous prize, like this tote bag. And I, without hurting anyone's feelings, I got my children as far away from that librarian as quickly as I could, because as well-meaning as that librarian was, the message she was sending to my kids was that reading is so dull, so boring, such a chore, that no kid in his right mind would read a book for you know, the sake of reading a book but only for a fabulous prize. That is, as she was increasing extrinsic motivation via the tote bag, she was decreasing the intrinsic desire to read that love of reading. And at first, it might look like a great deal. My boy might say, read books and get a fabulous prize. Sure, wait a minute. What's wrong with those books? Nothing. She might say, nothing. Are they interesting? Are they fun? Sure. Well, then why are you offering me the tote bag in order to read those books? Extrinsic motivation, rightly so, casts a great deal of suspicion on whatever tasks we're being asked to do. Um, it actually takes something fun, and by paying someone to do it, we've turned it into a job. We've turned it into a job. Let's stay in preschool. Classic study, 1973, our friend Dan Pink talks about this one. Three researchers go into a preschool and they identify the children who most like to draw, and they divide them into three groups. In the first group, they ask the children, would you like to draw? Of course they do, they love drawing, they draw, end of story. Second group, they ask them, would you like to draw? They do, and at the end of the drawing session, they present them with an elaborate, shiny, good player certificate. That's that. Now the third group, they show them the elaborate, shiny, good player certificate, and they say, would you like to draw in order to receive one of these? Some kids say yes, they draw, and they are rewarded at the end of that session with a good player certificate. Two weeks later, the researchers come back and look at those three groups again. The first two groups showed no change in their enthusiasm for drawing, in the length of time for which they drew, but the third group, was less enthusiastic about drawing. They drew for less time than they did three weeks ago. In other words, what had happened was, as the researchers increased extrinsic motivation via the shiny certificate, they decreased the intrinsic motivation or passion or love of drawing. 
This comes home to me because my daughter Emily, if you ask Emily, what do you want to be when you grow up? Invariably, she'll say, I want to be an artist. She loves to draw, loves to draw. And as a father, I am dreading the possibility that some well-meaning adult in her life will pour a cold bucket of extrinsic motivation over what she loves to do. To paraphrase Alfie Cohn, a student's love of learning is not a fire that must be kindled. Rather, it is a flame we must be careful not to extinguish. So what's all this have to do with us in high school? We've talked about preschool, we've talked about the research in general. Um, researchers have identified a grade orientation and a learning orientation, and they tend to pull in opposite directions, like intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Um, if, you, if you, next time you're in the hallway, listen in on what kids have to say about their classes, how they talk about their classes. You'll hear kids talk about the books they're reading, about literature, philosophy, politics, mathematics, science, what have you, because these things are interesting. They're intrinsically interesting. That's great news. It's great news. It's exactly what we want. You'll also hear this question. What'd you get on that test? What'd you get on that quiz? This one's a true story. I wish I were making this up. One boy said to another, I currently have an 88.7 in that class. If I get a 92 on the next test, I can finish the quarter with an 89.6, he said. And that's bad news. Um, those pull in very different directions. And so what we see here are the more we've raised, we think of grades as carrots or sticks, as threats or bribes, as extrinsic motivation. The more interested a kid is in grades, the less he is in learning. The more, so we're getting kids, our school is struggling for its educational soul at times. We're having kids who are pulled between the good player certificate and the love of drawing, or the fabulous tote bag, or the love of reading, or the 89.6, or a genuine interest in the subject area. We're pulled between those two things. Um, there's more bad news about extrinsic motivation. Grades tend to reduce grade, a student's interest in learning. We know that, that extrinsic and intrinsic. Grades tend to reduce students' preferences for challenging tasks. They tend to go with the easiest task, the quickest route to an A. And if we're merely thinking about achievement, we're probably not going to achieve anything significant if we're risk adverse, if we're going with the easier task all the time. What else do we have to say? Reduce the quality of students' thinking. Same thing, how are we going to achieve great things if we're actually thinking in, in lower quality terms? Um, more bad news for our preschool artists, extrinsic motivation decreases creativity. Again, we're, we're not going to achieve great things if we're being less creative. So how do we answer that one question? How do we maintain our passion for learning? Here's an answer. I think we should do everything in our power to tune out, ignore, reject, or call into question any extrinsic motivators that would dampen or decrease an intrinsic love of learning. We're a science and tech school, so I think it's fair for us to ask, if the research says this, why are we doing that? If science says this, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? You're not pigeons or rats, and you shouldn't be subjected to Skinnerian techniques as if you were. You have the right to insist that you not be bribed or threatened or reduced to an arbitrary number, or graded like meat for the convenience of a college admissions office. All of these things. Um, and we well-meaning adults in your life should stop doing that to you. We should stop doing that to you. We should exercise those extrinsic demons that would seek the ruination of our educational souls. We should stop making Faustian bargains where we trade away our passion we trade away the possibility of significant achievement for trinkets, for trinkets, for an 89.6 or a good player certificate or a tote bag. And like all literary deals with the devil, in short term, short term gains are great. You could walk away today with a tote bag. You could walk away today with a good player certificate. You could walk away at the end of the quarter with an 89.6, but the long term costs are significant. The long term costs are great. Emily Rogers has asked a great one question. We would do well to answer it, we'd do well to act on it, and I wouldn't wait for this system to change. I think it's enough for you to begin now with yourself. Thank you.